So continue our torque discussion. Let's practice evaluating a bunch of cross products, right? Because we talked about how torque is R cross F, and the mnemonic I use is I J K I J, like that. And we have to do this cross product. Completely not necessary, but just to help you visualize it as we're starting out. For two D case, we can kind of draw it out. So let's def let's draw an x y plane. Here's kind of the origin. So then, the R here is kind of positive x quite a bit and a little bit of negative y. So it kind of goes in that direction. And then your force. Let's see, minus one. So a little bit of negative x and quite a bit of negative y, so it might be a little bit like that, acting from the end of R there. Technically, yes, you could figure out what this angle is and then get the magnitude of the torque with this one and then use the right-hand rule to figure out that, or just by inspection, see that the torque as it is to spin clockwise. And given that we define positive z out of the page, a clockwise spin, we would expect a negative k vector at the end. But instead of doing that, since everything's already an ij component, let's do the ijkij way. When you do the cross product, it's very critical to remember that we're dealing r cross f. So they're a little sneaky here and give you r afterwards. Doesn't matter, we just sub in the right thing in the right spot. So this becomes a term by term expansion. i cross i is zero, so we don't have to write that. Then we have nine times negative six. Remember the negative is important with i cross j, right? And i cross j, i cross j gets you positive k, right? You can actually, in the future, just write positive k in right away. It's just, I want to show you a little more explicitly the first time around. And then next term is j cross i. So let's write each of the things out. Then you have j cross i, that'd be negative k. And then you have j cross j, which is zero. Everything has a unit of Newton meter. And so here there's one negative sign. And then there's three negative signs on this one, so it's also negative, giving us, as we expect, a negative k vector, which tells us that it should spin clockwise, which is consistent with what we were expecting based on where the r is and where the f is. But this saves us the work of doing a bunch of geometry and trigonometry to figure out the angle, and then doing the magnitude and direction separately, having i and j, we can do it all in one go. Moving on to part b, now we have 3d, i, j, and k. So it's not even worthwhile to try and draw this situation on the 2d kind of page. So we'll just use the i, j, k method directly and jump right into it. Again, we're going to do r cross f, not the other way around. You have three terms for the r cross with three terms for the force. So we would expect nine terms, except three of those, i cross i, j cross j, k cross k, those are going to be zero. So we should end up with six terms. And because we do have six terms, often I like to write things out in this following way to try and keep things a little more organized when we have to collect like terms. So the very first term we have is i cross i, which is zero, so we can forget about that. Then we have i cross j, and i cross j, I know will give me a k. So I'm going to write in this third column here. So then we have 4 minus 2 i cross j, which is a k. Then we're going to do i cross k, i cross k, you have to go the other way. So i cross k gets you negative j. So I'm going to put that in this kind of middle column here, put a plus sign. So we have 4, positive 4, and then positive 4, negative j, just like that. Then I do similarly for the other entry. So we got j cross i, that's my negative k term, which would be 2 and 4 like that. j cross j, nothing. j cross k, get me positive i. So let's try and squeeze in this first column space, carrying any negative sign that is there, and there's none in this case. And finally, we've got the k term, so k cross i is positive j. 
4 and 4 with a plus sign. And then k cross j will be my negative i. So we've got 4 and minus 2. Written like this, then we just add up each of the columns, right? Add up the i, adds up the j, adds up the k's. Don't forget your units at the very end. So we got positive 8i, 2 negative sign, positive 8i again, so summing to 16i. We have minus 16 plus 16, so that's going to be 0j, minus 8k, minus 8k, so minus 16k. So that would be the answer to part B. This would uniquely identify the torque vector, where this vector will give us the direction of the rotational axis, and then we can use the right-hand rule to know that it rotates around that axis in some angle and in 3D, because it's got some i and some k component. And so given any force applied at any position in 3D, we can use the cross product to figure out the associated torque. And it's important that you really master taking cross products because getting the torque will only be part of a problem. We'll have to make use of the torque to actually say something about the motion of rotating objects.